Hey guys, I'm Nathan with Duck River Honey, and today I want to talk about the controversy and some frustrations surrounding oxalic acid in use as an acaricide or miticide inside beehives. And I'm pulling a lot of this information from the May 2021 issue of Bee Culture, where uh, you know the pot was stirred a lot when. Um, it, we found out that we would be able to use oxalic acid while honey supers are on hives. And the reason for that is that USDA has, and EPA has found no evidence that uh, an increased level of oxalic acid makes its way into honey even when you treat with honey supers on. Now, you can debate whether you want to do that or not. I don't think I will because I don't think I need to. You know, I'll pull honey supers probably in July and then jump on my treatments. So I think I can separate those two pretty easily and um, that allows me to not treat at all while I've got honey supers on the hives and you know, I'm, I'm good with that, I like that. Um, so I, I'm, that doesn't affect me that much, but boy, it sure stirred the pot. There was a lot of bad information out. There was uh, a lot of people promoting things that just simply are not legal and <laughs> Um, I just want to talk about some of this stuff. So I'm going to start by reading this. Apibioxyl, EPA registration number 91266-1-73291, is currently the only legally registered oxalic acid dihydrate product in the United States that can be used to treat varroa mites. Let that sink in for a second. Apibioxyl is the only legal oxalic acid that can be used to treat varroa mites in beehives. So if someone is recommending to you that you buy wood bleach or you buy generic pure oxalic acid from a company such as Florida Laboratories or another chemical producer, um, just be cognizant of the fact that that is an illegal product for that use. So basically what this boils down to is the label is the law. And if the oxalic acid that you're using does not have a label on it that says it is okay to use as a, a miticide in beehives, it is illegal to use as a miticide in beehives. It has to be labeled in order to be legal. And not only that, the label that's on this bag uh, says that it is not legal to use while honey supers are on. So the company had to supply this supplemental label that clarifies that this is legal to use with honey supers on. Um, if you don't have this and you just have this, guess what the law says? Whatever's on this label is what you can do or can't do. If I add this to this, I can treat it while honey supers are on. If I leave this at home, I'm illegal to use this product. Um, I am always illegal to use this product. This is Florida Laboratories, a five pound bag. We'll get to that in a minute. So I wanna talk real quick about why I like oxalic acid, why it's very promising to me, uh, some of the unknowns and controversies around it. We don't know how oxalic acid kills mites. Um, you know, if you look at some of the research being done on oxalic, there's a lot of it going on. Randy Oliver's been studying it, Jennifer Berry at uh, UGA's been studying it, Cameron Jack's been studying it, University of Florida's studying it, everybody's studying it. It's been used in Europe for decades. Scientists don't know how it kills mites. And that's a tough thing to do. Uh, Lewis Bartlett at UGA, uh, when he was talking to Bob Benny in his video series, said that killing a a bug on a bug is a very difficult thing to do because most chemicals, if they're toxic to one type of insect, they're going to be toxic to multiple types of insects. So you have to be extremely specific to find a compound that will kill one bug, but not kill the bug that it's attached to or lives with, uh, it, its host. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting problem we don't know how it works, and since that's an unknown, we don't know if honeybees or if mites can develop resistance to it. Um, 
all indications are that mites are not developing resistance to oxalic acid. Um, but without that knowledge, we simply don't know if they can or if they are just incapable of it. The reasons that I really like oxalic are it is easy on the bees. So if you use um, formic or thymol or some of these other organic compounds, they can be pretty rough on the bees, especially in hot temperatures. You have to be very careful to um, use it correctly and use maybe even a lower dose, or you can kill your queens, you can kill brood, uh, you can run the bees out of the hive, you can force them to abscond. A lot of bad things can happen while using those compounds, uh, so you have to be very careful. With oxalic, it's much easier on the bees. I've seen no research that, that shows that vapor, vaporized or sublimated oxalic acid has any ill effect on queens, brood, eggs, nothing. The bees just kind of keep trucking on through it, but it kills a high percentage of the mites that are outside wax cappings. And the wax capping issue is one of the two big problems with oxalic acid. Um, it will not kill mites that are under wax cappings, whereas formic or you know, some other compounds do, do go through wax cappings to kill mites. So if you are treating when there's a lot of brood in the hive, you have to try to get around that. You know, it's not the best time to treat. The best time to treat with oxalic is December, early January when hives are broodless and all those mites are exposed. If you treat two or three times then, you're going to kill 90% of the mites, then you'll kill 90% of the 10% that were left, and then you'll kill 90% of the 10% of the 10% that were left. So uh, you can really clean up a hive of varroa mites with oxalic while brood is not present. I'm treating with it in July and August, and to try to get a good enough kill to get control of the mite population, I'm treating six times at four day intervals. So I'll go ahead and address this. The second big problem with oxalic is it is very harmful to human lungs. If you're going to use this stuff, you need an acid gas respirator. Uh, I heartily recommend the full face. It's got the eye protection as well because if you ever have a, an, uh, a vaporizer get plugged and blow up in your face, you don't want that stuff in your eyes. It can burn you severely. Uh, if you get it in your lungs, it, it is very damaging. And w guys, we only get one set of lungs. So get the right protective gear if you're gonna use this stuff. Be smart about it. So oxalic is easy on the bees. It's hard on mites. It's harder on people to use. If I'm using it with brood in the hive, I've got to do multiple treatments. I'm doing six treatments at four day intervals. Um, those are some of the advantages and disadvantages. Now, let's talk about some frustrations that I've got. The label dosage on this is one gram per hive body. So if you've got a double deep, that's two grams. The research that's being done shows that that is ineffective. So Jennifer Barry at UGA uh, looked at the dosages and they did not get control with a one gram dose. They may be getting control with a two or three gram dose. Cameron Jack at, uh, I think he's at University of Florida, he was using up to four grams per hive body and showing good results. So th this product is illegal to use in a way that I think is most effective on mites. You can't legally use a high enough dosage. Um, and add to that, another frustration I have is apibioxyl is produced by chemicals, I can't even say this, LAIF in Italy, and it's distributed by Vito Pharma in France. Florida Labs is a U.S. company. This stuff is $44.95 for 350 grams. From Florida Labs, I can get a 10-pound bag for 28 bucks. To get 10 pounds of apibioxyl, I would have to spend $600. So the labeled correct legal oxalic acid is many times more expensive than generic oxalic acid. 
the generic is illegal to use. That is frustrating to me, but there, this is a this is a, an issue with layers to it. So one of my other frustrations is this is the biggest size that you can get in Appy Bioxyl. 350 grams, that's 12 ounces. I want to be able to buy a one, a one gallon bucket, two gallon bucket, five gallon bucket. Why can't I get this stuff bulk and get a better price on it? Well, Italy and France, uh, how much shipping is there? tied up in this bag? Are there tariffs tied up? Are there taxes from an expensive country? You know, there's a lot of that stuff tied up in here, but I wish I had more choice. Uh, I wish that we had pellets that we could use where you don't have to measure. I, I wish that we had some innovation in this product and we don't have it. And I think part of the reason that we don't have it is a lot of beekeepers are getting the generic stuff. They're subverting the market and they're not using legal oxalic acid. That's an issue. Um, you know, this article, there's an article in here uh, in this bee culture, May 2021, that talks about that and really advocates for people buying the correct oxalic acid. And uh, they basically make a point that if you buy the generic, we're never going to have better products in the labeled. You know, if you can buy this for $28, why would you spend $600 on that? If there's no profit motive, for companies to enter this market and innovate, we're never going to have people enter the market and innovate. I, I did the math on this. If you bought 10 pounds of generic oxalic, it's gonna be $28. That will do over 2,000 hives. To do the same amount with the labeled Appy by Oxal, it's about 600 bucks. Um, $600 to treat 2,000 hives is really darn cheap even if you're you're using the labeled stuff the biggest problem i see with it is i can't buy that in bulk you've got to buy all these tiny little bags and try to get enough of it that uh, it's easy to use and and all this you've got spillage and waste and um and all that so i wish that we could see some innovation in the products of this and we are seeing some of that you know randy oliver is doing some oxalic acid dribbles with uh, blue shop towels or Swedish sponges and, and things like that. Uh, he's in Northern California. Jennifer Berry tried to repeat his success with that in South Georgia. Auburn tied in with that. They had 400 hives in the study. They did not see control with that method. Uh, they saw a reduction in the increase of mites, so maybe they plateaued the population, but the point of IPM is when the, popula the mite population gets above the economic threshold, you're able to take it back down under that economic threshold. And what they saw with the dribble or the shop towel Swedish sponge method was it just plateaued the population at that three and a half, four percent or whatever it may have been. It didn't decrease it, it just didn't allow the population to increase. So in an IPM framework, that is a failure. It doesn't work. Uh, you've got to be able to take it back below the economic threshold. And, you know, maybe it'll work in certain parts of the country. Maybe it won't work in certain parts of the country. We don't know the answers to that yet. That's, that's frustrating to me. There's just more questions than there are answers in all of this. And uh, just beware. Um, you know, buyer beware on this. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. If people tell you, use this, it's great understand it's an illegal product people tell you to use this it's great it's a legal product but if you follow the label at one gram per high body you may not get control of your mites if you do the shop towel method oa dribbles and all that if you're in a really humid hot area where mites are active 12 months a year you may not get control at all if you're in an arid area it may work great for you um, so just beware on all this if your conditions don't match the conditions of someone else, your results are probably not going to match their results. And I guess this is a testament to beekeeping being local. You know, the, the best thing that you can do is to join a local group, to get local knowledge about what works and doesn't work in winterization and mite treatments and feeding, nutrition, and queens and, and all this stuff. Local adaptation, local knowledge, 
it's probably the, the, best, the best knowledge that you can get for your bees. You know, guys, I've got a, a following with this channel. I've got a lot of people who see the things that I do, and I take that as a responsibility, and I take it pretty seriously. So you're not going to see me encouraging people to do things that are illegal. It's like the, you know, the seatbelt law or the speed laws. I'm not going to encourage people to go out and speed or to not wear a seatbelt when that's the law of the land. Um, so I, I do take that as a, a responsibility. I take it pretty seriously. So beware if you see people recommending things that aren't legal. Um, just know what you're doing and be, be aware of it. Just be aware of it. Well, guys, I hope this is helpful. If it's not helpful, I hope it's uh, entertaining or educational or informative. You know, this may step on some toes and um, I, I understand that people may be doing wrong and not like being told that they're doing wrong, but you know, truth is truth. Whether you want to hear it or not, it's still true. So that's, that's all I've got to say about that. Guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.